In this tutorial, I uh, want to talk about uh, how you handle situations with uh, objects that are going to be two-sided. So let's take this over here. I'm going to come over to display and turn on back face call. Now you'll notice that there's only polygons on the outside of where the tarp sits. If I go into the material, double click on the material and click two-sided, it should be showing up two-sided max. If I go high quality, Max has a hard time sometimes displaying uh, two-sided inside the viewport. If I go to render it, you'll see that it actually does show up two-sided. One thing that is a problem, though, when you deal with two-sided has to do with lighting inside of game engines. All right, so the light will come in and it'll hit the surface. And if you want to take that lighting information and save it out in, say, a light map, right, or get accurate lighting where it's it's one color lighting maybe from an orange kind of camp, uh, campfire or candlelit area here, but maybe a blue moonlight on the top, you're going to need to have two sets of separate polygons. So our object's already one mesh. Now we don't want to just throw a shell on it because shell, if I put a shell on here and I configure modifier sets, I'm going to set my total buttons to eight. And on this very last one, I'm going to add shell. So I'm going to show you why that's a mistake. If I click on shell and I go into wireframe, you'll see that now, let's remove that real quick. I'm going to come over here to utilities and polygon counter. If polygon counter isn't in there by default, click more and you'll find it here. All right, so here's my polygon counter. My vendor stall is currently made up of 1,836 triangles. As you can see, the overall scene with all the hidden items makes up a lot more. If I come over here and if I put a show on it, well, that doubles everything. And not in addition to doubling it, it also makes a bunch of additional asset edges where it builds thickness into the side. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We don't want to just put a shell on everything. What we want to do is I'm going to come in here to element. I'm going to click on the tarp, which is the only area that we really want to get a shell on. And what I have to do is come over here to edit elements, or I'm sorry, edit geometry, and click on the settings button. So I'm going to go ahead and click detach. I want to detect, detach as a new object. I'm going to make sure both detach to element and detach as clone are both turned off and click OK. So now I can select just this cloth portion and put a shell on it. Now, at this stage, we could probably work with what's here. The thing is, we want to do a little bit more, right? So we're going to do 0.5. We're going to make it not quite as far out, right? 0.25 may end up with a little bit of clipping. So we'll just be conservative. We'll set it to 0.5. You want to be careful whether you do inner or outer mount so it doesn't end up clipping your geometry. And now I'm just going to right click here and say collapse to. Because when you do create a shell, it does fill in these side edges. So I'm going to convert this edit poly or edit mesh to an editable poly. And in edge mode, I'm going to click on just this one little edge down here at the bottom that makes up that ring. I click the ring button. Now it's gone all the way around. I've selected 86 edges. If I click delete, now let's get our polygon counter back out here so you can see this. Polygon counter is back. I'm in edge mode. This model I currently have selected is almost 2,000, it's 1,900 um, polygons. Well, let's move flip my little loops out of the way, right? So 1,900, I've selected all those edges going around. If I click delete, that just got rid of almost 200 polygons. So that's really good. That's going to be a nice savings for us. We don't have to worry about those edges there. And the fact that there is a little bit of a gap, you're most likely not going to even notice that there. So now I can come in, select my main object, the vendor stall, and reattach the tarp to it. Okay. So now we'll get lighting on both the top and the bottom. 